Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to start things out with AMD Navi, which is, of course, the upcoming range of new Radeon graphics cards from the company. I have a couple of uh, pieces of news here, the first one being an exclusive bit of information from one of my sources. I was told by a source that AMD have already briefed at least some of their IAB partners concerning the specifications and performance of the upcoming graphics cards. Although he was not able to provide me specifics by saying, well, the performance is X or Y, this does marry up to the uh, exclusive that we revealed a while ago that AMD indeed were planning to reveal the cards at uh, June uh, timeframe with a launch of July. This also makes sense from the grand scheme of things with AMD uh, being public in their desire to launch the Ryzen 3000 series of processors by the second quarter of this year. So it would appear that AMD for the most part are completely uh, releasing a new lineup of products and obviously that is going to be a critical component if you excuse the pun and then fighting off both Nvidia along with Intel. And while we're on the subject of a Radeon graphics card to the Navi, there has been an interesting set of patches which have been released for Linux by AMD, 138 of them, with references to a new SMU driver for future ASICs. I'm going to read out the quote from the patch notes here. The power play driver will be retired. The final version is for Vega 20 with SMU 11. However, the future ASIC will use a new SWSMU framework to, to implement as well. Here is the first version of the new SWSMU driver that is basing on Vega 20. We would like to do a re-arch for Linux power code to use a new SMU IP block for future ASICs. We hope to write a simple and readable framework for Linux. These Linux patches were actually discovered by the website forenix.com. Unfortunately, there is no actual references to what type of features we will see with the next generation of Navi. Oh, and also SMU does not necessarily mean, or rather a new SMU, does not necessarily mean that Navi will not use a variant of GCN. We're still on the fence of exactly what Navi will bring to the table, whether it's going to be a complete departure from GCN, whether it's going to be a revision of GCN, or whether it's going to be an entire new architecture. We have seen, of course, various patents for future GPUs from AMD that we have covered on the channel. The problem is it could well be that those are Arcturus, and how they relate to Navi right now, we just do not know. NVIDIA and AMD have had a major partner in the form of TSMC. For AMD, they're going to be critical in the 7NM race, providing the 7NM node for both GPU and CPU. For NVIDIA, they are currently providing the 12NM node for Turing, but the company are expected to migrate to 7NM by 2020, at least that's what the rumors are. However, according to the company's CEO in a recent investors conference, they are planning to tape out uh, 5NM processors by the end of the second half of this year, 2019, and according to the company, they should be hitting full-scale production of 5NM by the year 2020. This is going to be critical for multiple reasons. Most likely, we're going to see smaller scale processors use this first, so mobile type of solutions, but it won't be too long before the likes of AMD graphics cards and NVIDIA graphics cards and CPUs and so on can adopt this. And this is going to be really difficult for uh, Intel to deal with, because right now, Intel are in a really difficult position. Um, <laughs> And I'm going to get slightly off topic right now, but still, if you think about it, you've got the uh, various Coffee Lake refresh CPUs. This includes, of course, the uh, 9700K, the 9900K, and they are great processors. They're expensive, yes, but their performance is second to none. They are really fast. The problem is with the 7NM process from TSMC combined with the... Um, chiplet design from AMD, it would not be um, a stretch to say that 
a very cheap Zen 2 Ryzen 3000 based processor could essentially nuke most of uh, Intel's current lineup, which is Coffee Lake based. So really Intel need to hope that Ice Lake does not get a delay. And it's going to be very interesting to see what Intel's strategy is going to be over the next six months with Coffee Lake, but it's also going to be interesting to see what their strategy is with Ice Lake. Because let's say that AMD release a Ryzen 3000 series part that's around 100 US dollars. And that part is between four to six cores, which is obviously eight to 12 threads. And let's say it doesn't even hit five gigahertz. Let's say it hits, let's be very conservative, very conservative and say it only hits 4.8 gigahertz. The problem is for Intel, it's going to basically mean most of their lineup is not even worthy of a purchase. And even if you were to say, well, yeah, but the 9900K is faster, let's assume for a moment that the 9900K is still faster. Well, yeah, but you're talking like a $500 processor versus AMD's very cheap processor. So uh, for Intel to um, really nail down the, um, the 10nm process is going to be critical and for them of course to also work towards chip stacking which we've discussed in the past. AMD of course are going to naturally continue with the chiplet design. From what we're hearing Zen 3 is going to be based upon the uh, 7nm plus node with Zen 4 going to move towards the uh, 5nm process but it's possible that AMD might just decide to step this up depending on how confident they feel. Either way, the fact of the matter is that for NVIDIA, this is great news as well, because it basically means that for the next couple of years, they really don't have to worry about processes. They can just worry about moving towards a more powerful architecture. And now let's switch gears completely. And we're going to discuss Nintendo. The Japanese website Senkai has had an interview with the president of the company, Mr. Furukawa. And he has gone on record and said that there is no price reduction currently planned for the Nintendo Switch. And Nintendo are not currently considering releasing a successor to the Switch. So his wording is not that they will not release a more powerful version of the Switch. Instead that they will not launch a successor to the Switch, which is a very different meaning of course. The Switch has been on store shelves for about two years. And honestly, it's just selling very well. I mean, it's just selling incredibly well. And it's not surprising, really, because it really does hit that kind of segment of the market where if you've got an Xbox, if you've got a PlayStation, if you've got a PC, it's still worthy of a purchase for the Switch. Not just because, well, Nintendo games and Nintendo games on, on other platforms and blah, blah, blah. But it offers the ability to play games like even Doom 2016 and Wolfenstein and so on on the go. Now of course if you're used to playing let's say Doom at 120 frames per second at 4k on your you know uh, SLI RTX 2080 Ti based rig then of course you're going to have a very different experience moving over to the Switch. But still it's darn impressive what developers are squeezing out of the system. And my personal opinion is that we're going to start hearing a lot about the next generation consoles very soon. Uh, the rumors are, of course, that this GDC, developers are going to start giving presentations and we're going to hear a lot more information on the next generation Xbox as well as the PlayStation 5. And obviously, the rumors are that the next generation Xbox can handle ray tracing. It's going to have a very powerful GPU and so is the PS5. And so it's going to be very difficult for developers to then make a decision of like, well, if I release this game, on the PlayStation 5, there's no way that I will be able to get this title also running on the Nintendo Switch. So I am very interested to see how that ends up being balanced out. Because yeah, games like Mortal Kombat 11, there's a good possibility that the Switch is going to be one of the best selling versions because Mortal Kombat on the go, I can see being very popular. And well, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. But when the next generation of games come out, how well are they going to be able to be ported to the Nintendo Switch? That's my question. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Yes, it's been a little bit shorter today, but uh, there's a couple of reviews I've got going on and some other bits and bobs. So unfortunately, shorter video. 
But hopefully you've enjoyed it. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.